well, there you have it. Let's take a look at what Vermanubus had to say about the pain of getting good in his Smash Conceptions series. Getting good at anything that's worth getting good at is a long and usually frustrating process. For the lucky ones of us, the process unfolds passively over a fairly long period of time because the person just might not really care all that much, but might have a knack for whatever it is they're doing. In my case, for instance, mm. I'm a decent writer, but I've never really set out on a targeted quest to become a better writer, and you can probably tell that from my scripting. <laughs> Music, on the other hand, I labor tirelessly over, and so the So I think a lot, a lot of what he said already is kind of like <laughs> assumptions what that I don't really, at is don't really agree with, right? So... Getting good at anything that's worth getting good at... Is anything that's worth getting good at? I mean, come on. Um, I think there are things that are worth getting good at that are not like an arduous road um, of self-improvement and self-discovery, etc., etc. Um, but let's keep going. It is a long and usually frustrating process. For the lucky ones of us, the process unfolds passively over a fairly long period of time. So that's another thing. Like, I don't think anyone passively gains skills. I think you actively gain skills, but the thing is, so, like, we talked about this a lot back when um, hard work versus sound was a debate, um, but I can kind of recap. I think that, in general, as you do things in life, you build up skills, and you actually build up a lot more skills than you think. So say that you become a really good football player, then you might build your awareness, you might build up your... Um, well, I mean like hand-foot coordination, I guess you build up your balance. You build up a lot of these things that are not learning football, but you, you build them up regardless. And this is not a passive progress uh, process. It's you actively trying to improve at football, and by spending so much effort on it, you pick up these skills that you can later apply to other paths in life. Um, so yeah, I... I don't think there's passive improvement. What I do think is that there are things that you improve at without specifically trying to get better at that thing, but you pick it up regardless, which I think is a very different nuance. There's no passive improvement. Time, because the person just might not really care all that much, but might have a knack for whatever it is they're doing. And that's the same. So that is actually what having a knack is. Is um, I spent my youth playing football for 10 years, and now when I try to improve at video games, I'm already used to the process of improving, even though I never specifically, you know, practiced how to improve. But now I have a knack for it. Um, but in reality, it's something that you worked on before. Even prodigies, like if you look at Mozart, um, I actually discussed this in my video on hard work versus talent. If you look at Mozart, his father was a dedicated music teacher for children. His older sister was also a prodigy. Um, and that's because their dad literally wrote a book on how to, you know, learn music as a kid. How to get better at that stuff. Um, and he started doing that from a very young age with his kids. Like, f going through that process himself. Uh, not just playing the piano, but also analyzing musical works, trying to make improvements upon them, etc, etc. So it wasn't just like uh, a passive uh, acquisition of knowledge or skills. It was an active process in which they didn't just act um, and improve through practice. They also spent a lot of time in like, the theory of it. Um, so I think... I mean, I know he keeps this video short, so this one is like seven and a half minutes, so this kind of nuance tends to be lost. I still think it's pretty important, though. In my case, for instance, I'm a decent writer, but I've never really set out on a targeted quest to become a better writer, and you can probably tell that from my scripting. Music, on the other hand, I labor tirelessly over, and so the process of becoming a better musician is painful to the degree that I care about it. So, why is getting good so painful? Because it's a lot of time spent having to maintain a tenuous sense of faith that one day you'll get to where you're going, even if your path there is entirely unclear. Yep. Being good at something is the same as saying you have a high degree of control over desired outcomes, which seems straightforward enough at first, but the inevitable difficulty here is knowing what to control. In other words, what concepts and variables are at play that our desired skill requires us to be aware of and to master in order to achieve that fine-tuned degree of control. Yeah, so this is a good point, is that, okay, so what he's saying, it's very fancy, um, the way he, he phrases it, but you, 
you need to know what's like awareness precedes control. So you need to know what's going on before you can adjust, uh, you know, and change what is going on. Um, I don't know what part of that is painful. I think the painful part is that, uh, and I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I might be misunderstanding. I'm not, I don't speak English as a first language. Um, I think the painful part is the blind trust. Because if you are, if you try to get better, there will be things that you do not have awareness about and as such don't have control over, but you're still um, surrendering to the process, even though, even knowing, knowing that you don't have full control over it and trusting that eventually you will, even though there's no guarantee. Like with most things, when you start out, you see fairly rapid improvement because a lot of what you learn and observe consists of pretty basic concepts that are both obvious and concrete. Yep. As you get better, you start to notice things going on under the hood you didn't really notice before, and as things start to become progressively more abstract. In any given match, there is an almost endless amount of information being thrown at you, and it's up to you, the person playing the match, to make meaning out of that constant stream of information because you have limited mental resources and you can't process literally everything that's happening. Yeah, so this is a good point that we talked about before, right? Is um, abstracting information. So rather than looking at the game for exactly what it is, which as he says is a lot of information, you try to divide what you're seeing into categories. So this is neutral. This is juggle. This is the corner. This is advantage. This is uh, recovery. And by compartmentalizing aspects of the game, it becomes easier to act on it because it, this is the juggle situation, which could include um, a near infinite amount of situations. But at least you know, in the juggle, I have a goal that is similar to, you know, try to get them back in the air again. And I have to watch out for things that are similar to them landing, bef uh, hitting me before they land or getting back to center stage, etc., etc. So there's this balance that you're striking between abstracting information into helpful, uh, like, little pieces and trying to see the game exactly for what it is, um, which makes it harder to distill in uh, important information. But it also gives you more control over the nuances because when you do categorize things in these pieces there is some nuance that is lost for example consider a ganon full hop nearing a fox's shield as a beginner you might see this and the most meaning you can pull from it is that ganon is just attacking the other person as an intermediate player you might be able to parse the interaction a little more abstractly and see it as the ganon pressing there on shield specifically Deeper still, a higher level player might recognize that Ganon's spacing Nair on shield specifically at a steep angle of entry rather than just short hop Nairing to high profile Fox. This could go as high deep profile. as you like, and the interpretations of what's happening could be as numerous as the people interpreting them. Now, my analysis and understanding of that interaction might seem obvious, but that's because I already framed the situation so it seems less abstract, or rather, I isolated that one interaction as meaningfully distinct from the rest of the set. Yep. Point being, the road to getting better is about how we interpret and frame information. For a personal example, one way I frame information is by categorizing how my opponents approach in three or four ways. This okay. is a completely arbitrary way of thinking, but it embodies concepts and information that give me tight control of the match. The kicker here is I want to know what I want to know what is the categorization is. Four ways to approach? God. Is it like baiting? So that's one. A direct approach, an overshoot, and an aerial approach, perhaps? I don't know. That's cool though. I, I would really like to know. I don't actually know if this is the optimal way of thinking about the information I get no. in a match. There may yet be things I don't see going on or other more useful things I could be devoting my attention to. And that's where the difficulty lies. Improving past a certain point is arduous and tedious because it takes faith. You spend a lot of time unsure mm. if you'll find the right path. In other words, if I wanted to improve from where I am now, where do I go? I truthfully... So I don't I don't think this is a matter of faith um, as much as it's a matter of ego and pride. Because um, I feel like... Okay, so if you're at a point where you can't, you don't know where to go from, from, from there, um, then it's time to ask people what they think and get other perspectives 
So, yo, what's up, Quincy? Say I get coaching. I guess get coaching, right? Um, but I mean, talking as as the coach, right? So where do I go when I don't know where to go? Well, I talk with people. I try to look at it from their perspective. I try to research VODs. And um, when something happens and I feel like I understand it, um, I still give it another watch. And I'm like, okay, so are there aspects of this uh, situation that does not fit my uh, my theoretical framework, right? And I think for a lot of people, it's not it's not about VOD review because that is still a very tedious process to you know review a VOD, get uh, relevant information out of it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So a very good way to get past a plateau or to um, take control over this situation that he describes as very abstract is to talk to others and explain or, or try to get their perspective and then add it to your own. What's up, Quintessence? Quintessence, there you go, Quintessence. Thank you for the support, hope you enjoy the stream. Learn a thing or two about a thing or two. In the end, we're all human, we need different perspectives to grow, exactly. It's all about perspectives. Um, and he's saying it takes a lot of faith to um, basically hope that you will find that next perspective that you need. Um, but I think there's a lot that you can do to control it, personally. Um, but that's just me. Find the right path. In other words, if I wanted to improve from where I am now, where do I go? I truthfully have no idea. No one does when they hit these walls. As I always say, most of the time finding the right question to ask is a lot harder than answering that question. That's why everyone's motivation to improve crests dramatically when they feel like they've identified a problem area or some concept that gives them greater control over the game. True. And it's hard to be motivated when you hit these walls, and that lack of motivation is compounded still by the fact that your results may not necessarily reflect your perceived understanding of the game. You may feel like you understand the game at a very deep level, and for that reason you might not understand and are probably frustrated by the fact that that understanding isn't necessarily translating to the results that you want, but it's not so much about understanding as it is finding new and different ways to frame information so that it's actionable and effective for you. So in that sense, it's not how Wait. much you pay attention to, it's what you pay attention to. You have to... Yeah, so, I mean, I get, I, I get what he's saying. It's not about what you know, but how can you act on it, right? So how does your theory translate into practice, which is a very important distinction to make. So let's kind of listen to that again. ...getting to the results that you want, but it's not so much about understanding as it is finding new and different ways to frame information so that it's actionable and effective for you. Yeah, so that's actionable and effective. Um, and, I mean, we talked about this yesterday. Um, I think part part of his understanding, uh, like, on a conceptual level, but part of it is also knowledge. So you need knowledge of the game, of the characters, to, you know, frame your understanding. So you can understand how interactions work, but if you don't understand the specifics, like the character in front of you, or how they interact with certain stage elements, then your understanding doesn't really matter, right? Um, so it's important to to add as like a an asterisk asterisk here is that your understanding can be can be deep and can be very applicable to the game, can be very actionable. But if you don't know the uh, the game, like the you don't have the knowledge of the game, then it's still going to be hard to act on it. Um, because it's not in the right context yet. So in that sense, it's not how much you pay attention to, it's what you pay attention to. You have to keep looking for new ways to view the game and parse concepts into smaller sub-concepts, like differentiating yep. different categories of approach, rather than just lumping them all together as approaching. And this takes a repeated cycle of noticing things, coming up with new theories and ideas about those things, and experimenting with them until you have those breakthroughs. One of my biggest conceptual breakthroughs came towards the end of Smash 4's life. Yo, Tayo W, what's up, man? Thanks for the support. Hope you enjoyed the stream and learned a thing or two about a thing or two. Currently watching Vermanubis. came towards the end of Smash 4's lifespan, and it was categorizing approach styles like I just talked about. This led to a dramatic diversion in my traditional gameplay, which was based largely on hard reads, to using my opponent's neutral tools against them by putting hitboxes where I knew they'd throw out their neutral tool well before they were actually there. Other nice Kirby players emote. frame information and parse concepts differently than me. 
That's why we all play differently and get different results. Your playstyle is a complex interaction of different lines you draw around and between interactions based on what concepts you understand and recognize and what bits of information you explicitly look at. There's a video by Vermin Nubis, so we're watching this and uh, because my student didn't show up. So afterwards we'll probably get into viewer battles. ...understand and recognize and what bits of information you explicitly look out for. And for that reason, there's never an obvious or easy way to improve because improvement at late stages of skill development has mostly to do with finding better ways to mentally model the game, and that's a very abstract task. I think, I think part of it is better um, modeling the game, but part of it is also... Um, it can also be a lot of character understanding. So, um, how you deal with situations is very dependent on experience so even if you're like this kind of goes back to like the practical application right even if your mental model is correct um there will be a lot of factors that change how you act on that model so say that in a mid-range i prefer to go for a defensive option try to bait my opponent out and then go from there uh which is the right thing to do but versus some characters um for example um what's his name sonic the interactions change so very much and then you suddenly have to act on that information in a very different way and that like sonic is a very extreme example but it happens in a lot of matchups so i think even at high level there's a lot of optimizations to make um on a knowledge basis hang on for one second guys So this pro showed up, so we'll finish reviewing the, the video and then we'll go into uh, the coaching session. And there's a parallel to this for me in music as well. For those of you guys who've listened to my music, it's probably not terribly surprising that I've studied composers like Nobu Uematsu religiously over the course of the past decade, yep. and to this day I still revisit my favorite game tunes and always find something going on that I didn't realize before because I have a new appreciation of new concepts and a new way of looking at the music. Keeping this grind up takes that faith because for all intents and purposes there really is no way to know ahead of time what problems you'll face or what the best way to proceed is going to be and getting better isn't always a question of being able to look at any given interaction and see what's going on but how effectively the information you choose to frame and act upon allows you to control the match. Yeah. No? Yeah, yeah. So careful. the core the core of being good at a game is control. So the more you can control the better. And the more you know about the game, the more control you have. So that's like the TLDR. And I think that word, like, kind of glosses over it because, you know, he's, he's framing it in a certain way. But I'm going to frame it in a different way. Um, and the way I see it is control is the ultimate goal. And the more you can control, um, the more consistent you will be. So when we talk about the jump from high level to top level, I think there's plenty of player, players at high level. Um, but the gap between them and top level is, it could be the mental model, but in a lot of ways it's also consistency. So certain points of the game they've modeled out perfectly, and other points of the game they haven't modeled out very well yet. Another way to look at that is that they, over certain aspects of the game, they have a lot of control, and over other aspects they don't. So at the core of consistency lies control, and at the core of control lies understanding. Very important to stress that this isn't just about mincing concepts down to microscopic detail to a point where the concepts and framing of information becomes useless and you can't really keep track of them in a match, like treating, I don't know, a, a full hop wolf nair at a 45 degree angle differently than a wolf nair at a 48 degree angle. <laughs> Rather, it's about, yeah. as I've said before, the perspective you take and not how much you pay attention to, but again, what you pay attention to and how well paying attention to that thing or set of things serves you. At that, yeah. speaking of abstract, I'm sure I've overloaded you with abstract information at this point, as I tend to do, so I think I'll give it a rest there and let that simmer for a while. It's been about two months now since my last video, so I'm glad to be talking to you guys again. <laughs> but, as many of you know, music is where most of my energy gets put now. And speaking of which, a few people asked me recently and in previous videos about where to download the music they've heard in my videos, so I'll put a link in the description. Um, the download link on the site will say, misleadingly, 
buy digital track, but you don't actually have to buy it. You can just enter zero to get it for free, which I'm completely fine with and encourage. At that, thank you guys as always. I hope I didn't just confuse you, and if I did, mail me your receipt and I'll knit you an apology sweater. <laughs> that was a good video. I f and thanks, Wellington. Um, I've been doing this for a while. Um, but yeah, I, Vermanubis has really good videos. Um, I think this is a very important topic. Is uh, I think the pain of getting good, um, the main message that I got out of this video is that you when you improve you strive for control and con having control over something like um like if you look like it yeah I will like it I think it's a good video um a match has an entire different person that you have no control over so in reality, when you look at a game, it's 50% in your hands, 50% in their hands, and then if you're playing versus hero, it's another 10% that's out of your control. Uh, but, you know, it's it, it split, so you never have total control over this. But you still have to look for ways to expand your control over the match, and you do that through understanding, and by knowing more of the mechanics that are going on behind the scenes, you will be able to influence more variables that your opponent is not influencing. And by influencing more of the game, you are exerting more control over the outcome. Um, and the, the pain is that even though you control more, you still don't control everything. So at the end of the day, you're still gonna lose even though you are better than your opponent uh, because there could be areas in which you are worse and you it, it's it's hard to control something that um or it's hard it's hard to gain more understanding over something that is at its core defined by a meta game that is super abstract like mastering a meta game is very hard to do um because you can understand as much as the game, uh, as much of the game as you want, but how much do you understand about the meta game? How much do you understand about the correct choices? How much do you understand about risk reward and how it's played? How much do you understand about the fact that getting a small hit with low reward can lead to an entire stock loss? So perhaps it's a better choice than even going for that forward smash, even though on paper the reward is higher. But the snowballing nature of advantage state is not factored in in that case. So how do you quantify the snowballing nature of advantage state? How do you, how do you learn uh, in, in a system that has so many variables and so many permutations uh, plus a metagame on top of that? It's just very hard. Um, so really good video. Really good.